Give the step was unusual, it says that the program. She was going to be a French teacher. Is that right? Do you speak French? A bit. Well, I mean, a very good French teacher, if you only speak it a bit. Again, you know. <laughs> but then she discovered that the course she wanted to study got cancelled due to lack of interest. So she decided instead to study computer science on the assumption it would involve graphics. Didn't it? It, not a many, not many. Uh, not part of the course, Casey came across Technocamps and wanted to get involved. Professor Farhan is on our table, was uh, one of the inspirations this young lady's life. She now teaches uh, computer science, she's a lecturer and program director at Swansea University. She's going to be a great speaker, cheer like you've never cheered before. And welcome, Casey Hopkins!
and I actually thought, oh, I'll be able to design some really nice brochures, um, make some good YouTube videos, that sounds about right. Landed. Anyway, I chose computer science, I'm going to talk about my first lecture in a moment, and from then on out, I think I felt out of place, and I think I still do, to be honest. Um, I don't know how I'm here, but we're over there, we keep going. So my first lecture was with Neil Harmon. I don't know if Neil's here tonight, he usually comes along, but... Uh, and this was all about Java programming. And I sat in the class, I took a middle of the, middle of the lecture theatre seat, the front was too keen, at the back, I, didn't, I couldn't see the board, to be honest. Um, so middle, perfect. And I remember looking to the person next to me going, is this computer science? And she just looked at me and went, yeah. And the class went on and they talked about oh, what programming languages have you used and what schools did you go to or what subjects did you study and I matched none of what anyone else was saying but I just thought you know we'll keep going and as I said I felt out of place not only did I feel out of place because I didn't know what the subject was but I felt out of place because I was a female so in my class of 120 there was only seven girls, so a roughly 5%. I think my maths is right, Farron can let me know if I'm wrong. Um, now, this is the case across most classes. I say 5%, at the moment the average is around 20%, so we're getting there, but 5% um, was my class, so I stuck out like a sore thumb. Uh, Stuart can actually speak to me on this. I didn't just stick out like a sore thumb because I was a girl. I also stuck out like a sore thumb because I asked questions all the time. Students don't do that. Um, and I also answered questions all the time. I wanted to know that I belonged, and my way of belonging was to show that I understood. Oh, I always highlighted everything. Everything was <laughs> multicolor coded. I can't understand otherwise. Anyway, so these are just a few pictures of my journey through university. So I could talk a lot about these, but during my three years I did um, a variety of different projects, um, a number of internships. So I actually went to work in Newport for free for a two-month internship doing web development. Then I went to work in Arkiva, which is that big satellite dish there. And who's heard of Arkiva? No one. Oh, one! Oh, Luke. Ugh, doesn't count. Um, <laughs> But yeah, basically, Arkiva is behind all of our TV and radio broadcasts. They broadcast for us, um, but we never know because we don't deal with them. That's the job of Sky and BBC and so on. So yeah, they're quite a big company, and I remember one day I sat there and I actually took down the IT systems. So one of my jobs was to try and analyse um, the team's performance and try to make it better. So I thought I'd install this little bit of software that did the job for me and there wasn't enough memory on the thing that I was installing it to and so all of the servers stopped working, nobody could see Jira anymore and basically we just sat there for half a day doing nothing whilst the proper IT guys fixed it. Um, but anyway, I continued. Um, in my third year I built a monopoly for the visually impaired which was just a moving board, you rolled a dice and it talked to you. Uh, it was the best project. Um, and then in my fourth year, so I actually did a master's, I was that crazy. Um, not only did I do my master's, but I also bought a house. So you can see the last three pictures here. I wasn't just learning how to do computer science anymore. I was also rewiring the house, building some walls, doing some tiling, and doing revision in the process. But I passed, I graduated, I got a first class degree, and then I went to work for Adbra. So, um, yeah, uh, I went there as an IT graduate, and I've got to say, what a lovely company to work for, the culture is amazing, and I actually didn't really want to leave, but as I mentioned earlier on, my passion why was teaching. I couldn't exactly be a French teacher anymore, but I thought maybe I could go into computer science. And so that's when I seen a teaching fellow, teaching fellow job advertised. So this is my continuation of a path. So people might be thinking, what's a teaching fellow? Uh, I asked the same question. I actually emailed Farron about it. And I said, do I actually have any of the 
qualifications for this? And he said, well, you know what? You did the teaching module in your third year at uni, and you can do computer science, so give it a go. So I applied, and I got the job. And I have to say, it was an amazing experience. I say was, I'm still pretty much deeply involved in the whole thing, uh, just at a different level. Um, so the job itself involved doing outreach with schools. So one day I could be teaching a six-year-old how to build robots and then make them fight. And then the next day I could be teaching the degree apprentices where I was the youngest in the room and the rest of the students were probably more than double my age. Now that was actually petrifying. Um, but you can probably tell I'm quite confident I'll give it a go. And it went quite well. So a few years down the line, um, I kept going. I started a PG cert. You can probably see by this and by, I don't know, what I've already told you. I like to have many things going on at once. So whilst being a teaching fellow, I started a PG cert. Then um, Farron and Liam kindly asked me to be assistant program director for the degree apprenticeship. So just doing more stuff. Then I applied to be a lecturer. This was a job I never thought I'd get. I don't have a PhD. Um, but again, Farron was my, one of my biggest supporters telling me, you go for it. So I did. Then COVID hit and Liam was needed in the department. So I then stepped up to be in the degree apprenticeship program director. Again, just making sure things run smoothly. Um, lots of extra responsibilities, but I won't go with you. I uh, finished my PG cert. Then again, Far interested me with another pan wheels project, which again, a phenomenal opportunity. Um, and this year, I actually started my educational doctorate, so whilst working full time. Uh, I just had Cowie in October, and I've recently been promoted to be a senior lecturer. So from 2018 to 2023, I've gone from not being anywhere near academia to, in my opinion, doing quite well for myself. So, Stuart told me I had to finish now, but I'm going to take five more minutes, so uh, I'll through. <laughs> so, like everyone else does, these are the typical challenge, challenges face, and then we've got a bit of the highs, and then my conclusion, so we're on the long. So, first of all, you only got that because you're a girl. And I faced this throughout probably most of my life, football. Oh, you only play football because you're a girl, it's different. Then, um, when it came in university, I get good grades. Oh, you only got that because you're a girl. When I was applying for jobs, you see the clear kind of sentence that says, applications from women welcome. Well, why aren't applications from men welcome? They are, but they just wanted to try and entice you more. But to me, it was kind of a drawback. I don't want to be seen as a special person. I just want to be seen as a person applying for a role that I think I might be able to do. Feeling the odd one out, I've kind of already covered this. I was the odd one out, I think, a long while before I came to university, to be honest. I'm a bit of a problem. I had no idea what computer science was, so obviously that was a big challenge. Lack of role models. Um, yeah, I didn't have many role models. So I came from a background where I was the only person in my family to go to university. And since I finished university, only one other has. So there was a lot of... There was no role models within my immediate family, so where I looked for role models would be my peers. Again, they were all boys. So you look up a bit higher, lecturers. And I have to say, Monica was actually my lecturer in second year. A, a woman, she stood out, and she was a leader as well in the department, so it was really nice to see. Not having the option at the younger age was definitely a challenge faced. As I mentioned, I had no idea what computer science was. If I knew what it was at the younger age, maybe I would have chosen it. And then the final one that I put in up with my husband, I think everyone can resonate with that. Um, but whilst he was also a challenge face, I have to say, he's probably been one of my biggest supporters, which brings me on to my um, many highs. So having an amazing support network. I've mentioned a lot of names here tonight, and I think every one of those have supported me throughout my career at Swansea, but also many people in general just have helped me along the way by saying, oh, that's good, that's great. So not only staff, colleagues, family, but also the students around me. Proving the doubt is wrong. Um, I'm the type of person where if you tell me I can't do something, I will do it 10 times over and 10 times better. So, yeah. Um, which has made me feel worthy of my place as well. And I think that's what a lot of women feel like they have to do. 
they don't just get their place, they have to feel like they deserved it, and I think that's wrong in general. Um, but I've also had the opportunity to encourage others like me, and I've been given the challenge of doing something new. So I said I finish in 5-2, and I will. So a couple of takeaways. First of all, what is computer science? I haven't taught you that at all. Um, but I do think that we need to teach people what computer science is. And I know tonight isn't all about computer science, so this can extend to other STEM subjects. We are changing this, the curriculum is changing, and I think there's only better things to come. Girls can do it too. Now this stands for computer science, but also everything in general. Don't ever say, oh, you can't do that, you're a girl. Let them try, and if they can't, oh well. Challenges are good, and there's a quote here, I'm not going to attempt to say it, um, but it translates to things that are excellent are difficult. And this is on our degree apprenticeship handbook at the front. And when I was thinking of things for this slide, the first thing that popped to my head was challenges are good. Um, lots of people face a challenge and they might turn away, but you've learned something from it. But a lot of people take those challenges and overcome them. And I think that's when you really learn. And finally, role models. We definitely need you. And it doesn't mean that you have to stand out and be a role model to everyone around you. You can be a role model to just one person and you can support just one person. So the reason that I went for my promotion this year is because somebody reached out and said, actually, you'd be really good at that, give it a go. And so I did. But if I hadn't had that support and encouragement, I wouldn't have bothered in the first place. So thank you for listening. But before I leave, I do want to end with another huge thank you to Technocamps and in particular Farron and everyone within Technocamps for the fantastic career path that they've offered me from the day that I started university. Thank you. We, we've had three great speakers uh, this evening, and can I ask you to give them all a huge round of applause? We start off with, with Jenny and Claire and Casey, and all three inspirational, and all three role models. And I'm sure we've all found something in all of their, their talks that will in inspire us. Often, you get youngsters come here who are looking at careers in the future of courses to study. If you are one of those courses, you would have found some great, inspiring help this evening. Although, I have to say that Casey's claim to fame is she went on her course to Arkiva for a day. And right at the beginning, Jenny went to Australia for three months. So I'm saying if you pick in a course, then astronomy is a lot more exciting than computer science. And you get to go to more places, to be honest with you, including Australia. And you go, <laughs> they were all brilliant. Give them one final round of applause.